Hey guys, welcome to some more A-level maths revision. In this video today, we're going to take a look at the trapezium rule, and this is a really nice easy chapter. Um, you know, do a few of these questions, and you've pretty much got it in the bag. Um, so let's take a look at the questions in this video. So really, there's not much variation between the questions. Um, hopefully, we'll be able to cover essentially everything that you might get asked um, in this video. So this first question here, we're given this graph. Um, or rest the sketch the graph at y equals 3 to the x. Um, so let's have a look at that first. So obviously this isn't related to the trapezium rule as such. Um, just making sure you're confident sketching graphs. So my graph's a little bit um, off center. So let's just note down which axes we've got. So where does the graph cross the y axis first? So it across the y axis when x is 0. So when x is 0, that means 3 to the 0, because this is 3 to the x, so 3 to the 0, that's equal to 1. So what it does, it cuts through at 0, 1, so let's just say there. And this graph is actually an exponential graph. So what does it look like? Well, it's pretty hard to sketch on a tablet, but it's going to look something like this. Okay, so that's an okay sketch of it. It cuts through there at 0, 1. Okay, so that's just a sketch of it. Part B then, we want to complete the table given the values of 3 to the x to 3 decimal places. So in other words, all we're doing is just plugging in those values. So let's just change to a flat pen. So for example, if x is 0, that's 3 to 0, and we already know that's 1. That's what we've worked out here. 3 to the power of a half, so that'd be 1.246. And they've done 0 0.4 for us as well. So all we need to do is do 3 to the power of 0 0.6, and then 3 to the power of 0 0.8. And if you plug these just both into your calculator, what you'll get is 1.933. Obviously, make sure you're doing this to three decimal places, and then 2.408. Okay, so that's our table of values. Now, the trapezium rule is given to you in the formula book, as you can see over here. So let's go back to a white pen. So we're given the formula here. So we don't need to worry about memorizing the formula. We just need to know how to use it. So as we can see here, the trapezium rule gives us an approximation for an integral. Um, and like we can see here, we're doing it for this function, 3 to the power of x. Now, we're doing it between 0 and 1. So in that case, our a and our b, so a is 0, b is 1. So let's work out h first. So h, well, that's equal to b minus a, so that's 1 minus 0. 1 minus 0. And what do we divide by? Well, we divide it by n. So how do we work out what n actually is? Well, n is just simply how many values have we got if we start counting from 0. So we just change pen color again. So this would be my 0. So that's 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. We've got five values in essence here. So in that case, we divide it by 5. Oops, change back to white. So we divide h by 5. So this is one fifth, so that's h. So the formula starts, so if I call it a, so a is approximately h divided by 2, half of h, so one fifth divided by 2 is one tenth. So that's just h divided by 2 so far. And then we're going to times this by the first value plus the last value in our table. So our first value is 1 see here and then our last value like we can see at the very end here is 3 so the first plus the last gives us 1 plus 3 and then we add two lots of every other value so plus 2 times the sum of every other value so what would that be well that'd just be all the other values apart from 1 and 3 so 1.246 plus 1.552 plus 1.933 Okay. Oh, sorry, we've got the uh, 2.408 as well. Before I forget that. So that is everything that we need to work out. And at this stage then, this is just an exercise of plugging it into your calculator. So what I'll do is I'll just simplify this bracket here just to make life a bit easier. So this is still 1 over 10 times. So 1 plus 3 is 4. I've worked out this bracket here and then times it by 2. So that gives me plus... 
So if I add this up, that'd be 18.278, and then divide it by 10, we get 1.8278 there. Okay. We're not asking it to a certain uh, level of accuracy, so that answer there is absolutely fine. Um, that's just the only thing you've got to be careful of, um, whether the ask for it to, for example, two decimal places, for example, or three significant figures. Always keep an eye open for that. But like you can see there, that is the question done. So overall, this chapter, this topic, it's more of a calculator exercise. Um, as long as you can plug things into your calculator correctly, it's really easy marks. So let's take a look at a question there where we've got a slightly more difficult function. Um, We've got this equation here, y equals 10 divided by 2x plus 5 root x. So the first part is just completing the table again. Part B then, now we're then using the trapezium rule, and then part C, this is a question that can come up you know, quite often. It's asking whether our estimate in part B, so our approximation for the area, is either an overestimate or an underestimate. So we'll discuss how do we kind of understand when it's which, when we get to that part. So let's have a look at part A first. So part A, let's just do it in the table. Well, part A is just working out this value here for when x is free. So when x is free, that's not really going to be enough room, let's do it at the top here. When x is free, that's going to be y equals 10 divided by 2 times x, so 2 times 3, which is 6, plus 5 root x, so 5 root 3. Now obviously we're not giving this in its exact answer. We want to give the value to five decimal places. So all I do is plug this into my calculator and see what I get. And I get 0.68212. Okay, so I've plugged that into the table. 68212 there. Okay, so that's my value. So what we're going to do now is work out the trapezium rule um, using this table of values. So I'll change back to the white pen part B then. So again, we're just using this formula here, so like we'll always do, start with working out H. So H, so what's our integral here? Well, our integral is simply between 1 and 4 of this Y here. So we're, we're trying to find the area between 1 and 4, so it's H equals 4 minus 1 divided by how many values there is. So remember, it's 0, 1, 2, 3, so we divide it by 3. Okay, 4 minus 1 divided by 3, so that's 3 over 3, which gives us 1 for h. Okay, so now we can actually start looking at the approximation. So the area is approximately h divided by 2. So if h is 1 and we divide that by 2, that's just a half. So now let's start working this out. So remember, first term plus last term. So if we write this out in full, that's 1.42857 plus 0.55556. So that's my first term plus my last term. And then we add two lots of the other terms. So that's going to be 0.90326 um, plus 0.68212. Okay. And then at this stage here, like we said for the, you know, the last question, this is just a calculator um, exercise now. So what would this give us? Well, this is going to be a half of 1.98413. So that's this bit here simplified, just adding the bracket, um, or the, the insides of the bracket here, plus 3.17076. Okay, that's this part here times by 2. And then add these together and divide it by 2. Okay. And if you do this, you should get that A, the area, is approximately 2.5774. Okay, so that's our area there. Now for part C here, we're asked whether it's an overestimate or an underestimate. So, remember the trapezium rule? It sounds silly, but the trapezium rule works by actually taking the area of all these different trapeziums. So, for example, if we're going between 1 and 2, 2 and 3, and then 3 and 4. So if I just... Oops, that's not very straight, is it? Let's just get rid of that one. If we get rid of that one, let's just redraw it. It's not very clear. So, for example... So, 
don't forget we're going between these two points here. So it's a, it's not very easy to draw freehand. But if you think about this trapezium then, obviously that should be a straight line. I'm taking this full area then. Okay. But remember we only want this part up to the curve here. So this little bit here, so we draw it in a different colour. Um, let's draw that in yellow. Where's my pen? Bad pen colour there. Let's try blue. So this part here in the blue, that's an overestimate, okay, because we're above the curve. So that part of the area there, we don't actually want it because we're only looking for the bit under the curve. Same again here, so if I do it in blue this time, we join these two points up to form a trapezium. We've got a tiny little bit above the, um, the curve again, which that we don't want. And if you were to repeat it here, obviously each time you go further down, that, that gap gets smaller and smaller. But the idea here is that in each case, we're, we're overestimating ever so slightly. Okay, so for part C, um, well, in this case, it will be an overestimate. Okay, so overestimate there. As the curve is under the trapezium, which we can see by the little diagram that we've drawn. You don't actually have to sketch anything like that on your exam, um, as long as you can understand why, but I, I, I would recommend doing that. Um, just so you can actually see what's going on there. Okay, so that's that question done. And then the last question here, um, quite a nice one to finish with, just again, application of the trapezium rule. So, part A, we just want to complete the table. So actually, if I change it back to flat pen here, so we're looking what happens when x is 2, when x is 3, and then when x is 4. So we're working it out for e to the square root of 3x plus 1. So I know this is in a black pen, it's not easy to see. Well, if x is 2, for example, that's 3 times 2, which is 6, plus 1. So that would be e to the square root of 7. Okay, You can write the decimal equivalent if you'd like, but I'm going to keep it exact, just like they've done here. Um, so again, when x is 3, that's 3 times 3, which is 9, plus the 1. So I get e to the square root of 10. And then finally, when x is 4, that's 3 times 4, which is 12, plus the 1. So I get e root 13 there. Okay, so that's my table of values simply. Now, applying the trapezium rule and getting this approximation for the area, well, let's work out h first, like we always do. So what's h in this case? Well, the integral is between 0 and 5, so it's 5 minus 0. We count how many values there is, so it's 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So we've got 5 values. So 5 divided by 5 gives us h equals 1. So working out the area now, we should be pretty used to by this point. It's h divided by 2, so if h is 1, so that's a half there. What I'm going to do is while I'm actually working out the, the trapezium rule um, approximation here, I'm going to keep everything in terms of e, but then when I plug it into my calculator, obviously we will get the decimal equivalent. So this is e to the 1, so it's first plus the last term. So the last term is e to the 4. And then we add two lots of everything else. So that's e squared plus e root 7 plus e root 10 plus e root 13 there. Okay, and then at this stage here, like always, calculator, work out the approximation. So if you plug all this into calculator correctly, what you should get for a is that this is approximately 110.6 to four significant figures there. Okay, so to four significant figures. So, that's the last question we have here. So that brings us to the end of this video. I hope this topic um, isn't too tricky and that this video has helped. If there's anything that's still unclear, just be sure to leave a comment down below. Cheers.